Welcome to my channel, I'm Scott, and in this video I am going to walk you through the process of valuing Wimmy's stock by analyzing their financial statements and dissecting their financial ratios so we can determine if it's a buy or a sell. Wimmy generated 44% of its revenue in 2020 from its holographic AR business and 56% from its semiconductor business. AR stands for Augmented Reality, which is an enhanced version of the real physical world that is achieved through the use of digital visual elements, sound, or other sensory stimuli using technology. It is a growing trend among companies involved in fields such as mobile computing and business applications. Starting in July 2020, it has grown and developed its semiconductor business by providing computer chip products and comprehensive solutions for central processing algorithms to its enterprise customers. The company has been increasing its R&D budget on holographic AR technology applications for automobiles, semiconductors, and cloud software. Earlier this year, it announced a partnership with the electronic subsidiary of car giant Toyota. With the rapid development of the EV industry, the demand for holographic AR navigation, windshields, rear view mirrors, etc. has been increased significantly. This company can leverage its technology and become a billion dollar entity by just supporting auto manufacturers. It does not have an active website, it just has an investor relations page which they set up to meet NASDAQ listing requirements. Last July, the stock jumped from $4 to $25 in just two days. The trigger for the rapid movement was from the World Artificial Intelligence Conference. Alibaba chairman Jack Ma was unable to attend, so he used Wimmy holographic technology to appear on stage as a hologram. The company is headquartered in Beijing, China and was founded in 2015. It started trading in 2020 and can be found on the NASDAQ and Deutsche Börse. Let's get started with the model. This is a small cap company, 338 million market cap. They're trading at 362 a share and they have 93 million shares outstanding. Let's look at their financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the free cash flows into the future and then you discount those numbers back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. So they do have positive free cash flow almost every year except in 2020. Because in 2020 they invested a lot back into their business trying to grow their semiconductor part and also their technology related to the car manufacturers. Net income is the profit or loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses. And that's also positive each year except in 2020. Revenue is a sales for the company. And you can see that grows a lot from 29 million to 115 million. So you can see in 2017, 18, and 19, they didn't generate a ton of revenue, but they still had profit and positive free cash flow. So most companies can be profitable, but they choose to invest a lot back into their business. And that's why some of them report negative earnings. You can see how much their revenue jumped from 2019 to 2020, and it's going to probably jump even more in 2021 and beyond. This is the company's income statement. All their financials are in Chinese yuan. I converted the numbers to US dollars since we're looking at the ticker that trades in the United States. If you want to know what the dollar amounts are in US dollars, just divide these numbers by seven. The top line is the revenue, the sales, and that grows a ton. Below that is the cost of revenue. These are the expenses directly related to generating the revenue. And you can see that grew a lot from 79 million to 597 million. Oftentimes your expenses initially are a lot higher because you have to get things in place, build out efficiencies. And then once things are more streamlined and efficient, your cost of revenue will go down as a percent of revenue. Revenue minus cost of revenue gives you your gross profit. And that is positive every single year. And then below that is operating expenses, which was pretty high in 2020 because they're investing so much back into R&D, trying to build out new products. So they did have negative operating income in 2020, but positive in prior years. They don't have too much debt, so they paid 3.8 million of interest on their debt. Before that, it was 11 million. And the bottom line of the income statement is their net income, which was positive every year except in 2020. This is the company's statement of cash flows. The top line is operating cash flow. That's how much cash the company loses or generates from its operational business. You could think of operating cash flow as net income converted to cash because net income is your accounting profit or loss. It's not actual cash. So they did have negative operating cash flow in 2020 
because they invested so much in R&D. But before that, it was positive. They do spend a little bit in CapEx each year, but not too much. Operating cash flow minus CapEx gives you your free cash flow. And that was positive each year except 2020. A lot of their funding is from capital stock. They added $138 million in 2018, $573 million in 2020. When a company adds capital stock, that increases the shares outstanding, making your shares less valuable. And it looks like they've been paying down more debt each year than they've been issuing. This is the equity section of their balance sheet. And they have 1 billion yuan of equity. They raised 932 million from issuing stock and they have 76 million of profits. That's pretty impressive that such a young company is already profitable. Let's look at the capital structure. They have 150 million of equity, 15 million of debt. They're 91% equity, 9% debt. And their net debt is negative 43 million. So they could pay off all the debt with the cash on their balance sheet and still have $43 million of cash left over. Their weighted average cost of capital is 7.8%. And that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four. That's 1.4 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $1.1 billion. We divide that by 93 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price of 1221. They're trading at 362. So they're trading at a 70% discount. It's a really strong buy according to the model. So I did project they would have negative free cash flow in 2021 because I think they'll still be investing a lot back into their business. But then in 2022, I think they'll become profitable again. And their 2022 free cash flow is 50% higher than their 2019 free cash flow. And I grew it 50% each year after that until 2024, then grew it 2.5% in perpetuity. I could only find one analyst that priced this stock and their price target was $7. So they're also saying the stock is undervalued. This is where the stock has been trading since April, 2020. And this is the big spike up when Jack Ma used their product at that conference. And then usually when a stock price comes way up, it comes way back down. But after that big spike, the stock was pretty steady for a while. There was a little bump here. It has been regressing little by little the past six months. But I would not blame the company for the stock price decline. Pretty much all Chinese stocks have taken a hit the past few months. And the stock is down 52% in the past 52 weeks, while the S&P 500 is up 32%. The 52-week low was 360, the high was 13. And the stock is on a decline, trading below its 50-day and 200-day moving average. Over 1 million shares are traded on average the past three months. Of the 93 million shares outstanding, 49 million are on float. 3% are held by institutions and 2% of the shares are shorted. The stock has struggled the past week, 30 days, 90 days, and one year. It's down in all those categories while its industry is up and the market is up. So if you invested $10,000 when this company started trading, you would have been at $30,000 after a few months. But there are a lot of people who would not sell because they may feel this stock could make me a millionaire. And if you would have held on, you'd be down to $6,800 today. That's a 32% loss. The founder of the company owns 14% of the stock. Then Wimmy Jack Holdings owns 11%. That must be Jack Ma's fund. I can't find his name linked to this anywhere, but it must be. That's probably why he used that product at that conference last year. And then the next three holders are all funds based in Asia. Let's look at their financial ratios. We can't look at the PE because they have negative net income. When a company has negative net income, usually look to the price to sales ratio since the price to sales can't be negative. And they do have a pretty good price to sales ratio at 2.9. The median is also 2.9. So this would indicate the stock is priced appropriately. And they also have a good price to book ratio because they did add some cash from those capital raises. They did acquire some businesses, so they have a good amount of intangible assets on their balance sheet. They have a pretty high current ratio and quick ratio. They have a good amount of cash on their balance sheet. They do seem to extend a lot of credit because they have a good amount of receivables as well. So with the recent capital raises, the company seems to be well-funded. Even though they had negative free cash flow, they have $73 million of working capital. So they do have enough cash on their balance sheet to get through the next year or two and possibly acquire another business or two. So to summarize, I have them trading at a 70% discount. What's good about a company like this is their products are so difficult to replicate. Like if Ford or Tesla work with this company to buy their products to put on their EVs, it would be really difficult for a car manufacturer to do the same thing this company does. 
And even if they did replicate it, they would have to stay on top of that technology to make sure it's ahead of the curve. And that's what this company does all day long. So they have a really great niche in this market. There's going to be more and more demand for companies like this and their products. So if they can continue running their business well, building relationships, not overspending, trying to maintain some profitability or growth, I think this company has a really bright future. I ranked their free cash flow as 3 out of 10, their revenue 7 out of 10, and their ratio is 5 out of 10. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.